OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. I'm going to just introduce myself first. My name is Chun Hee McMahon, and I'm a director of nursing <laughs> education at Clovis Adult. Clovis is uh, located in uh, Central Valley, right next to Fresno. And uh, my background, backyard is uh, Yosemite. Is uh, everybody? <laughs> so any of you are visiting uh, Yosemite, and uh, give me a call so I can <laughs> host you. I have uh, even extra, a couple of extra bedrooms, so you can use uh, that too. <laughs> so. I do actually have the mother-in-law room, so, so it comes like, very handy. So this project actually, it's not just the, uh, I did it by myself, but I was a teacher for four or five years, a nursing teacher for five years before I became a director of nursing. So uh, I, actually last year, July 2022, and I took over the position, and, and then I dragged two teachers who has a vision to you know, take over my role before what I did. So uh, Elaine Sims is uh, one of the teacher, and she is actually a department chair for the uh, nursing and allied health. And then Hannah Gandhi is the new teacher joined, and she is just dynamic teachers who uh, is very interested in teaching online as well as using all this technology. So uh, I just want to, uh, this kind of, basically I'm not teaching how to do it in this uh, presentation, but I want to show you how I transitioned and uh, how I started uh, uh, Moodle back in uh, 2017, before pandemic, and then uh, after the pandemic or during the pandemic, that Moodle transition to Canvas. So I just want to share the step-by-step -step that we took, and maybe you can utilize that information, take it with you, and uh, uh, implement it in your transition if you are using any LMS. But if you don't use it, no biggie, because I didn't, I never heard of LMS, I never heard of Moodle, uh, nor Canvas. I knew Blackboard, because when I was going to uh, City College and taking some course, they used the Blackboard. But at that time, when I went to school, that was in 1980, <laughs> uh, when not long after I came to America, there w I knew there was Blackboard, but very rare. And then it's very much troublesome. So we didn't use a whole a lot. But later on, and I heard that worked really good, it was a uh, competitor of the Moodle. So, but I begin with the Moodle because adult education provided Moodle for free at the time. So that's how we started a Moodle. And even though I never heard, and then I started taking my master program, and I had to use this Moodle. So I, I exposed to Moodle very short time um, as a student. So, so that's why I said, wow. I think I'm gonna implement Moodle. That was 2017. I had no clue that pandemic could happen. But we were very comfortable using it, Moodle, after I started it. I'm the only one used the Moodle at that time, 2017, when I created all the courses. And uh, I started engaging other teachers, hey, how convenient it is that once you set up the class in an online base, which I, very first, I started with the um, Canvas, not Canvas, um, my own website. I created my own website, and and then I moved to um, Google Classroom, Google to, um, and then the, it's Moodle. So the Moodle is my third generation. For as far as I can cons consider that online was started in the Moodle, and I want to just give you the background of our uh, Clovis adult education story, uh, and also how we, what kind of programming. Uh, we do have academic, 
He teaches ESL, English, math, and all the GED part, even special ed. But I'm only focusing CTE program because we do have CTE business section, and then we also have a CTE in nursing and allied. And I'm only in charge of nursing and allied program, but we do have a CTE business who work with me. So the CTE business chair is the one who started teaching us how to use a Moodle very first. So she was kind of my mentor. And then, uh, and, and then she started um, uh, kind of playing with Canvas freebies. So we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna just kind of what kind of program we offer in Clovis is medical assistant front office. We used to have a backups, but we closed the, the member of students was very low. So we only kept the front office program and then the administrative assistant program. So it's kind of like six to 12 months program show up for students, I don't think not as nearly as many as nursing program we have. And I will introduce that in a minute. So um, that part. So our CTE nursing and allied health program teaches LBM program. We have four cores. Each core has between 30 to 45 students. So that means each year, twice enrollment going up. So you can tell about 140, 120 to 40 students in the campus. And so one comes in, one graduate. <laughs> so it's always, it's a four rotating, but it is a program of 18 months. So I have to design, not in 12 months at a time, I have to design 18 months. So it's kind of a little different. It's a little more complicated than like going by 12 months at a time. So LBN we have, CNA program, so we call NA program. The reason we call NA is before they license certificated, they are still NA nurse aide. But once they certificated, then we call CNA. And that we have uh, part-timers, four, four hours, four days, and then about three months. So it's a 12 to 13 months each cohort can hold, we have AM program and PM program. Each cohort 30, so that's a 30 students, 30 students, 60 at a time, and then it rolls it three times a year. Yeah, so that's a, again, 120 and 100, almost 180 students can go through our programs. And then home health aid, we have right after CNA program, we offer home health aid. It's a 40 hour program with the NA certification. So that tells if it's all 30 students in the AM and all 30 students PM sign up, that's a six student, 60 students will be signing up for the HHA, but most unlikely not 100%, just they want to be a CNA so that about half of those will sign up HHA. But those students who does HHA are, I give them a credit for taking those course and NA course when they coming into LVM program. So our HHA and NA students feeding into our BN program. So it's kind of like um, we, we bring it in the students and purposely and then moving them and upward. And then we transition to RM program. But we don't have our RM program, we finished it in LBN. So, and I'm, uh, I already explained in the next, so what we offer. To become a BN, coming into BN program, we, all these students, NA, HHA, they have to take a prerequisite. We offer 12 prerequisites. It's, they only need to take up five of them, but 12, classes available. So all those has to be in Canvas, and it used to be in uh, Moodle. So each of those courses holds the students between 30 to 50 students signing up. So that's a lot of students we kind of going through. So do I, I mean, am I be able to handle all those students? 
just pay for constantly. I didn't think that was fair enough. So as you can see me, I come from other country. <laughs> I came here in America about 35 years ago and uh, uh, didn't speak English. And I went to adult education and I learned English. And then I move on and I become an optician. And then um, after I become an optician, and then I went back to school and I become an RN. So I went back and then when I went to this same school where I learned English, and they were stuck in 35 years ago, the way they've been teaching, and they never moved. They steal paper and pencil. That made me to think, you know, maybe I, 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 I'm in the right place. Maybe I can change. Because when I was an optician, and those optical field, it was all those uh, sales order was a written form. And, and then I just uh, kind of get an idea that sales no longer should be handwritten and because hand order, and then I wrap it up with the frame, send it up, which the carrier comes, pick up my order, and then send it up to, uh, I think it, at that time down uh, Spring, down LA area, Orange County, they manufacture their glass, ship it out overnight. It could be sometimes in one week to two weeks to get the glasses. So I started talking to ownership to change this system. And so we can enter in a computer. Those days already started having computers. This is what we're talking about, the, about 1995 between 2000. So the owner started adopting this computer. They computerize. So I helped them one company to moving paper to computer. So I had that experience. So that somebody heard, they made me to come and other, one of the doctor's office, can you integrate that? So I created <laughs> with the IT guys and we had a, a doctor's office converted. And after that, and I become a nurse. And here I become a five years experience and then I went back in same school where I got English. <laughs> and, and then I started looking at it, it's like, no way, I'm gonna change this, <laughs> this school. This old paper, they were using Scantron at the time, two, number two, I think a number two pencil, to give the test. So I said, if I can get rid of that Scantron test, I'm already successful. You know, that's, that was all, all I had it in my mind. That's why I started doing the Moodle because I moved all those test bank into Moodle. And that was an idea, but it, and then I started a teaching and then I, it's so much easier to moving all my uh, teaching material, syllabus and curriculum moving into Moodle. Uh, Moodle. It, it becomes a very convenient. So I started suggesting other teachers, let me set it up. I will just do the test bank, syllabus, syllabus uploading, and then your teaching material be uploaded in the Moodle. So that's how we, we using almost 100 of the subjects, 89 subjects. I created a classroom and uh, uh, completed Moodle. We use a 17, 18, 19, and 20, 21. For five years, we were very, very comfortable using it by then. I mean, I was very comfortable with the Moodle and uh, I did not want to move to Canvas, but unfortunately, I heard uh, Marjorie was telling me, oh, you know what, by the way, you wanted to create more, but we were going to go for the Canvas. That was bad news for me. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it was, uh, it's never bad news. I just want to share that the Chinese uh, proverb, it said, a journey of thousand miles begins with one step, right? I mean, I never use the canvas and I just keep myself very positive. Okay, now I can, I can go for the newer uh, uh, LMS. So how am I going to do it? So luckily the person who helped me to create the Moodle and she was still with, with us. She wanted to retire at, at least as far as I know, uh, as far as I know, last 10 years she wants to retire, but everybody grabbing her because she is the one of the IT. <laughs> so just want to use her 
So she is a, a CTE business section teacher. So she started when I found out that the Moodle going to be sunsetting and then a canvas is going. And so we started April 21, free canvas. We had no clue how they going to roll out the canvas, but this person started doing the canvas for freebie to testing out whether this is gonna work or we can migrate this all the section to canvas. So, so this Lila Young started doing um, doing the migration things. But I just explained those how I, uh, let me see, did I miss any? Nope, so. I'm here at the beginning. So we, we didn't just like uh, uh, adopted Canvas right away because we know it needs some step to uh, you know, take it. So very first, even though all our teachers familiar using Moodle, but Canvas for me, even when I opened it, it was shocking. It was way different than Moodle. I thought Moodle was much easier to use, but the Canvas has a one more step to you have to do things. So, so as I become an administrator, and I wasn't using Canvas, not as much, but I was able to work with Lila, and she and I discussed how can we assess these teachers' level of computer knowledge, even though we help them. But uh, some, of our, some of the teachers, we really help them like 90%, setting up all those courses, except they can open the quiz, <laughs> they can upload the syllabus, that's about it. But the, all other problems, there's always this resources nurse, a, a teacher, and or I was available to help them and runs all this uh, Moodle. So when we started a Canvas, we did a, this background check. What we did it is have teachers, by using the uh, Survey Monkey, teachers to, to um, do the, uh, their self-assessment types, how they can do and uh, learn better. So we, we did that and then the result indicated one-on-one, -on -one, a lot of people wants to have a one-on-one -on -one section. So we created one-on-one -on -one section and they, li they like to have handouts. So we create the handout and then sh the handout, it shows a step-by-step -step training. And then, uh, and then that wasn't even enough. We, we did it in person. By then, it was the, the, uh, um, our school started opening. So yes, we did it in the uh, uh, very first couple of sessions, actually in person. And then we did it as needed. We did also combine. So we did a Zoom because, thank goodness, we had a, a Moodle was available. So we could be able to uh, link all the Zoom link into our Canvas, uh, not the Canvas Moodle, so we were able to utilize, you know, those uh, uh, material readily and without creating whole a lot of things. And then all those step-by-step -step teaching, we actually repeated if that teacher needed more than one training times. And then we, of course, we have terminology explanation, a lot of computer terminologies to teachers it becomes very, like, you know, uh, difficult. So we made it that uh, uh, available as well. And so when uh, the business section of uh, the Canvas, they practiced it in uh, freebies, and then we petitioned to our administrators to buy the Canvas, so we, we have to purchase it. So now you know Canvas has to purchase, you know that, right? So by the units and they, they we all that negotiate. <laughs> so we know we're gonna use it definitely Canvas. So, so now we move. So freebie, we just tossed it out and we moved to licensed Canvas. Very first the vision is started. And then the last year we you know tested it out, we trained the teachers, uh, about four different sessions, and then and, and then we helped them to creating this uh, 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 courses and those step by step. This is uh, Elaine. 
and she will explain because as I move up to director of nursing and she took over my position and she become a resource teacher. So she started uh, helping teachers to creating courses and moving forward. So official our um, LMS, campus LMS started and then up was June and July. That's actually during the summer vacation. And then by, by the time June came, uh, the September came, then we all the classes Move, moved into there. So I'm going to share what Elaine, how she took to that. Hi, my name is Elaine Sam, and I'm going to be talking to you about the timeline of transitioning from Moodle to Canvas, which actually, when we had found out that we were going to be utilizing Canvas, uh, we didn't have a whole lot of time for training, and actually on our campus, we are still continuing um, to train our instructors just to, to be the best that they can using Canvas, and that's part of our, our project here with DMAC. So it took us about uh, two months just to get up and going, and so you can see the timeline here. So June, July of last year, 2022, I became the new role as campus administrator along with Junie McMahon, and with that role, I was uh, really trying just to grasp, you know, what I needed to do in that role, what I needed to learn. I, I felt like I needed to be um, a step ahead um, uh, from the instructor so that I could help them and I could support them. We did start our initial Canvas training uh, for the instructors um, in June, and we had a, some that carried over to July. And then August uh, 2022, we continued with um, additional trainings for the instructors. And um, we were kind of uh, pressed for time because our cohort, 8046 in the nursing program, they were starting segment two of the program. And so all of those courses, we already had planned for them to start on Canvas. And um, that was anywhere between, it was like three theory courses, um, three clinicals, um, throughout three rotations. And so it was a lot of courses that we had to um, get going uh, in August. And just with the trainings that we had. In September 2022, we had a brand new cohort that was starting Fundamentals 8047. And then October 2022, we had an, another cohort, 8045, starting segment three of the nursing program, which is the last segment of the program. And again, that was um, three to four theory classes, three clinicals over three rotations. And so it was a lot that we had to make sure we we're ready for. And then, as you know, December 31st, 2022, uh, Moodle um, ended with OTAN. So we were like uh, started a way year before, but then uh, next year when, the, when it ended and uh, it, it was smooth transaction, we were really ready. So next one, uh, how we did, and she's continued it because she did. We started off with face-to-face -face instructor trainings. And these trainings were coordinated by Lila Young and she's a 2018-2020 DLAC graduate. And actually, I went to Lila a lot just through when, what I was trying to learn as an admin, and she helped me tremendously. So our, our training did start off um, on campus, on our campus. They were all face-to-face, -face, these three trainings that um, Lila did for us. The first training session was um, focused more on Canvas from the student's point of view which I think was excellent because as instructors, you know, we need to know, we need to know, you know, what the student sees, you know, how to upload an assignment, you know, how to, to uh, you know, kind of troubleshoot, help the student troubleshoot um, when they're having problems. And so um, the first thing that Lila did is she enrolled us all in a course called Canvas Student Orientation um, that she found from Canvas uh, Commons, which is very helpful. It um, taught us how to um, 
complete a test entry assignment. We took quizzes so that we, we knew, you know, what the student would be seeing when they take a quiz and the different formatted questions. Um, we learned how to submit an assignment and um, we also learned how to um, send a message um, to the teacher. And so all those were very important. And even though this was our first training session, so it was overwhelming um, for the instructors, even you know, for myself, just because it was something new. We were just so used to um, using Moodle. And so it, it was definitely, um, you know, had its challenges. But then we went on to training session number two. And with training session number two, we learned how to um, actually migrate a course from Moodle to Canvas. And um, we had many, many courses that we used um, Moodle for. And so, um, you know, each instructor, the courses that they were teaching on Moodle, they learned how to do that migration. And so, first of all, we learned how to do a Moodle, a Moodle, excuse me, course backup file, which most of us already knew how to do that because we would back up our courses on Moodle when a uh, course ended. And so we, uh, we did that. And then through that, um, we learned the steps on how to import into a Canvas course template. Now, the course template, that was something new for us. And, you know, we were, I was like, well, what is a template? Wasn't, wasn't quite understanding. And so just learning the concept of that. And so all of our courses, um, we were able to go ahead and migrate from Moodle, doing the backup file, and they were all put into our course template. Now, one thing that Lila did for us, all of us instructors, is that she really had the course um, templates already ready to go for us. And so that was very helpful. And, you know, later on, of course, I learned how to um, create those templates and assign them to the instructors. Our um, third session with Lila is that um, we have learned to copy a Canvas course shell from the template. And so we had our course shell that, again, Lila um, had already set up for us. And so from our, our shell, we were able to copy our course, which was our template, into our shell. And again, those were, you know, steps that were, you know, initially confusing, um, but, you know, within time, you know, of course it got easier and easier. And then also with that last session, we also learned how to navigate um, through the modules. And so um, with that, you know, um, uploading a file, uh, creating a page, um, having um, the assignments, um, you know, everything that has to do, you know, with the modules. So is what we learned there. And then um, she also touched base about um, having a sandbox course. And so I did create some sandbox courses for some of the um, instructors. And uh, that was also helpful, um, very helpful for me because I was able to go into my sandbox um, and just like a sandbox, just play around in there. And, um, and it wasn't intimidating, um, you know, and I tell the instructors now, use your sandbox if you're not quite sure, you know, what something's going to look like or how it's going to come out. Use the sandbox. That, you know, that is what it's there for. And it was, you know, very, very helpful um, through those trainings. So sandbox, you got it, right? What it does, yes. Yeah, so that would be the one thing we do. And... Uh, We then moved on to online Canvas training. These trainings were coordinated by our very own Marjorie Olivares. We're very thankful and grateful to you, Marjorie. These trainings were set up last July and went to August. Remember, we had a goal of utilizing Canvas, starting with classes that were starting in August of 2022. So the first training session, which each training session, these were fantastic because 
these were presented by Canvas experts, trainers, and it really did um, help us. The face-to-face, -face, you know, gave us kind of a little bit, a little bit, you know, knowledge of what Canvas was about. But these trainings here, it really dug way deeper. And for the first session we talked about was module and communication. That's what we were learning. We learned how to set up a module. We learned how to set prerequisites for the module and set requirements for the module, how to lock the module. We learned how to um, upload assignments, a, a page, all those things that you do within a module. They're very, very helpful. The communication side of it, we learned how to post an announcement. We learned how to use discussions. We also learned how to utilize the inbox and email students, how to email a full class versus just emailing one or two students. So very, very helpful tra training session number one. Training session number two was all about the assignments. And one, one thing that was very helpful throughout all four of these sessions is that we would have our own Canvas course open. And so the trainer would, you know, teach us something and then give us some time to have the hands on, which was excellent. And then, of course, there was always um, time for uh, Q and A. So if we had any type of question, we were able to, you know, ask those questions. It was really, really good. Um, training session number two focused on assignments. And so, um, with the assignments, we learned about um, the assignment groups and how to. Um, do that and add weights to the assignment group to, to set up the gradebook, which is very helpful. We learned about the rubrics and how to use um, the rubric. Touch base a little bit on um, speed grader as well. And so um, that was really good. Training session number three was new quizzes and item banks. And so um, I know that there's classic quizzes but, and the new quizzes was um, something that was new. And so right away, I just wanted to learn about the new quizzes and I wanted the instructors to learn about the new quizzes. That way, you know, we didn't have to go back and forth learning classic initially and then go into new quizzes. I, I just like the way, you know, you're able to, you know, build a question and something that we needed to learn anyway. So we learned it right away. We also learned about um, item banks and how to um, do a QTI import from a publisher from, from the text, and that was helpful as well. And also, we also learn as you're adding your questions, how to add it, the question to the item base. So it's very, very good. And the different formattings of questions, as far as like the multiple choice, multiple response, um, hotspot, so just those different formats that we also learn. A uh, training session number four, our last training session was actually um, August 11th of 2022, and literally a week later is when we started our new courses for that new cohort 8046, and so we had to be ready to go. And so our, our, our last uh, training session on August 11th was all about grading and feedback, um, touched a lot more heavier on the speed grader, and also on the rubrics again, how to manually enter grades. Um, we talked about the annotation tools and how that worked, and even reassigning assignments. So all of these sessions were very, very um, helpful. And and yeah, we were ready to go. I was I was excited that once um, 8046 started that segment two, all the instructors they were ready to go on their canvas. So. We did a base four session and then online four sessions. We did. We know the tension spans, <laughs> so we never went more than three hours, but always a couple of hours, two to three hours in between. And the face to face, if they already learn, we let them go. So hour and a half to two, if they already got it, and we just uh, moved on. So here. Uh, you item that she show you how she so did it. So our learners for our project goal is our nursing instructors. 
And our goal is that all nursery instructors will be able to use Canvas and other technological resources to its full potential. So as a team, we decided to create a digital classroom for our instructors and we named it All Things Canvas and this is what you are seeing right now. And on here, we have um, you know, just general resources for when we are hiring a new instructor, just you know, some important things that they need to know. We also have our handbooks here for our campus for our three programs, vocational nursing, nursing assistant, home health aid. We also have um, our board of vocational nursing, all our curriculum instructional plans that we are uh, required to follow. Here um, we have the Canvas resources and what I created here is a Canvas video library and I chose um, videos that I felt that you know the instructors um, really you know need to know as far as um, those early stages of setting up a Canvas course. Now they do have access to all of the uh, library just by clicking here. But as you can see, I, I added about 12 videos here as, in regards to what I felt was uh, the most important that the instructors needed to know to start their Canvas building it up. So just the basically that we customize the, our teaching materials to teach um, us. Also within the Canvas uh, module is a step-by-step -step instructor guide. And again, I, um, Took, went over to you know, Canvas resources and I chose uh, some guides that I felt are going to be the most useful for our instructors. And again, they also have full access to all of the instructor guides just by um, clicking here and it directs them um, to the table of contents. And then also I have here have a question, ask the Canvas community. So I felt like, you know, if they, if they have a question, all they have to do is um, click on um, the word here, this logo Canvas, and it directly takes them over um, to the Canvas community and they can, you know, ask whatever question that they, that they have. And then just some other, you know, technological resources that they need to know to be an instructor on our campus. Um, this is um, Assessment Technology Institute ATI resources, you know, how to um, create an account, um, a quick faculty quick start video, how to be ATI champion. Um, we use uh, the publisher F.A. Davis, and so I created a module with some resources um, to help them to create that account how to gain their access. Um, also within F.A. Davis and Davis Edge resources along with um, Davis Advantage. And so right now, you know, our, our team, we are, we are brainstorming and, you know, we are adding to this digital course. And the, the whole goal is that we want, we want our instructors to be um, comfortable with using technology. We want our instructors um, to know where to go to find um, resources. So if they are at home and they're you know, working on their course, they can you know, go directly to this, to this Canvas digital course and they can find helpful resources. Um, so we're still building on it, but this is pretty much our whole goal for us, um, you know, for, as a team to help our instructors to just be Canvas experts is what we want for them. And, um, you know, it's really exciting, you know, and it's going to be so helpful because as we hire new instructors, I can just add them um, to this course, you know, add them as a student, and they can just, you know, have everything there at their, at their fingertips and not be intimidated and, and know, you know, that, you know, I'm there to help them, to support them, along with the rest of the team. 
And so this is a work in progress and this is what we have started so far. And so, um, you know, I'm very, very, you know, pleased with it and I'm excited, you know, these, uh, the next, you know, throughout this DLAC uh, program within the, the next two years, how this course is, is going to have so much more, you know, for, for the instructors. And so, you know, we're very, very excited about, about this digital classroom for the instructors. So next one is, uh, oops. Okay. So next actually, uh, let me see here. This might be good. This one is a teacher who actually uses- You see the back end of our transition from to Canvas from our two leaders. I would like to share the preliminary end results of the digital classroom. Here I have the template of my mental health class. I personally set up all my Canvas classrooms in a similar way. So the students are familiar with where I put things. The very first module here um, is where I provide reference guides. They have access to the Nurse Practice Act, our school um, handbook, a list of nursing diagnosis, a guide for troubleshooting ATI, which is a program that the students access frequently, um, and the syllabus. Subsequent modules are our daily classes. I load all PowerPoints, activities, and assignments, and exams by day for the students to access. I am a paper-free classroom at this point with all assignments and exams taken and submitted through Canvas. I just have students upload reports or transfer grades from other programs we use to keep my gradebook up to date at all times. Other programs we use include practice question banks from our textbook publisher and ATI, which is our partner for testing and other activities aimed towards NCLEX prep. I also have a module here at the bottom of my class to collect all makeup assignments and for students to submit their remediation forms. Um, this is not applicable to all students, but having this submission here helps me to keep all documents for my class in one place for quick reference. The final module I have is for um, our board of vocational nurses compliance, and it remains hidden from students. It holds my course description, learning objectives, instructional plan, and daily lesson plans. So uh, the final that I just suggest you to use the, this uh, LMS because you're gonna pay for free, campus, everything will be in the campus and you can grade it that. So my after very final afterthought is our journey continues. But I want to just uh, quote the Jig Jiggles, Jig Jiggles, his educator. Surround yourself with those who see greatness in you, even when you don't see it in yourself. And I didn't see it how I can move these things. And I feel like I moved the mountains. So <laughs> the Otan is invisible, <laughs> what I can see, and they see those things and let me know. So I think you're in the right place. So next time when I see you, maybe you, you're already adopting the campus.